session number three of Bristol Forestville Recycle, then and now, entitled The Recycling of Churches, describe the evolution of religious services within our community, the role that the immigrant movement played in the formation of a diversity of religions and churches, and finally, how these church structures, assets, and land have been recycled many times throughout the years. For nearly 14 years after Ebenezer Barnes built the first permanent home in this area in 1728, its residents were required to travel back to Farmington for compulsory Sabbath day services. Being an inconvenient, difficult, and oftentimes dangerous journey in the middle of the night and in all kinds of weather, as well as being exposed to lurking dangers, they requested and were permitted to become the New Cambridge Ecclesiastical Society in 1744. Becoming a separate society required the citizens to build a church or meeting house, to provide for the education of the children and tax themselves to support their needs. The first three religions to be established were the Congregational Church in 1747. This became the official religion of the community as well as conducting all civic affairs. The dissenting Episcopal Church was founded officially in 1754, directly across the Federal Hill Green from the Congregational Church. The final church, the Baptist Church, was founded near the old Fall Mountain School in 1791. They created the first church in 1802 near the intersection of West Street pictured are images of these three churches. The history, role, and structures of each of these were described in detail. A major conflict between a Congregationalist and Episcopalians during the War of Independence became quite apparent. The Congregational Church favored a complete separation from England while the Episcopalians remained loyal to the King of England and to the Church of England. The Episcopalian members, fearing for their lives, fled to Chippins Hill and Tories Den. They would not return to Bristol until 1834. The beginning of the Methodist religion in Bristol. A series of revival meetings by circuit writers in the Bristol Burlington area, circa 1833, brought about the conversion of John Humphrey Sessions and his sons, John Henry and William E. Sessions, to the Methodist religion. The Bristol Methodist Episcopal Society was formed in 1834 on West Street, the same year that the Episcopal Church returned to Bristol. This church would eventually become the Prospect United Methodist Church. As the Sessions family fortunes expanded in the industrial world at the Sessions Foundry, the J. H. Sessions Company, and later the Sessions Clock Company, so did the fortunes of the Prospect Methodist Church. The role of William E. Sessions in the founding of the Mount Hope Chapel on Hill Street, now the Church of the Eternal Life, as well as his major contributions to the Asbury United Methodist Church were also highlighted. The beginning of the Catholic religion in Bristol can be traced back to 1847 when the Irish worked at the copper mines on Stafford Avenue near the Burlington Town Line. Reverend Luke Daly from St. Mary's Church in New Britain would travel to Bristol monthly 
to say Mass and hear confessions, either in mine buildings or at homes of the mine workers. These workers, when the mine work was beginning to fail and eventually closed in 1857, transitioned to either laying railroad tracks or became employed in local factories. Reverend Daly assisted the Irish in securing a piece of land on the east side of the Federal Hill Green. A small wooden church was constructed and services initiated in 1855. This newly formed parish, the St. Joseph Roman Catholic Church, would become the first Catholic Church in Bristol. A description of the many changes that took place throughout the years including the building of a rectory, convent, and school in 1902, and the construction of a new Gothic-style church in 1925 were discussed. The St. Matthew Church in Forestville was founded in 1891. Desired since 1881 by village residents, and also caused by the overcrowding conditions at St. Joseph Church, created by the influx of a large number of immigrants, made the creation of a second Catholic parish necessary. Reverend Michael Rodden would travel to Forestville for 10 years to two different Forestville firehouses to conduct these services. The church was not dedicated until 1897 due to an economic downturn and a shortage of building materials. The land of the former St. Matthew's Church and the present edifice certainly serve as a prime example of the recycling of both physical assets and the associated land. At least 15 changes have occurred since the church is founding. Serving as a few examples are the Academy, Forestville's first school, was located here. The second school, known as the Forestville School. Years later, as Bristol's District 13 School. And still later, as the Sarah E. Reynolds School. The first Forestville Little League teams played at the site of the present church. As a final example, the defunct City Street, Brown Street, which ran from Church Avenue to Academy Street, was located directly in front of the present church. St. Gregory Roman Catholic Church on Maltby Street founded in 1957 and dedicated in 1960, was constructed to alleviate overcrowding conditions at the St. Matthew Church. The French-Canadian, Polish, and Italian immigrants that settled in Bristol and Forestville brought with them customs, traditions, and the religion that they were accustomed to. Although they greatly appreciated the worship opportunities provided by both the St. Joseph and St. Matthew churches, they desired to have a pastor of their own ethnicity who would be able to conduct the liturgy in their native language. The French Canadians in 1907, with the appointment of Reverend Joseph Perrault, were the first to establish an ethnically-based church. The St. Anne Roman Catholic Church conducted the first service in their own basement church located on West Street on Christmas Day, 1908. Ten years later, in 1918, a combined school and convent were built. The sisters eventually moved to a new convent in 1959. This now serves as the home of the St. Vincent de Paul Mission of Bristol. Due to decreasing enrollment, the school was closed in 1989. The Boys and Girls Club of Bristol 
now occupy this site. In 1953, a new church with an ultra-modern cruciform style and accommodations for 1,200 parishioners was dedicated with a reduced attendance at services and due to a shortage of priests, St. Anne's and St. Anthony churches were recently merged as the parish of St. Francis de Sales. The St. Stanislaus Costa Church. The second ethnic Catholic church, St. Stanislaus on West Street was founded in 1919 Reverend George Bartlowski was appointed pastor and served from 1919 to his retirement in 1968. The first on-site mass was conducted in their basement church on Christmas Day, 1920. A parish school was opened in 1930, but due to enrollment declines and financial concerns, it was closed circa 1990. The teaching sisters lived in classrooms until a house behind the school was renovated in 1948. This convent was replaced in 1967 with a more modern convent. This now serves as the Bartluski Parish Center. In 1954, the old basement church was demolished and a new Gothic style church dedicated in 1956 was built on the same site. A new rectory was built in 1963, replacing the former Andrew Ingram house, which has served as a rectory since 1919. The St. Anthony Roman Catholic Church when Reverend Luigi Baccaris was appointed pastor of the St. Anthony's of Padua Church in 1920, the Italian immigrants formed the last Catholic ethnically based parish within Bristol. Under his leadership, a small church was constructed near Pleasant Street. This church was utilized from 1920 to 1930. With the consistent growth of the parish, a new Gothic-style church with seating for 900 was built by Bristol contractor Cosmo Vaca. This church was dedicated in 1930. Reverend Settemio Credeli was appointed pastor in 1938 and served 34 years until his retirement in 1972. Reverend Credeli opened the first St. Anthony's Elementary School in September of 1940 in the shell of the former church. In 1950, he purchased the former Vitor Root factory and transformed it to a parish based St. Anthony High School. During its 18 years of service, there were 930 graduates but closed in 1967 due to the diocesan regional concept that included St. Paul High School. This site is now the city-owned Brackett Park. During Reverend Predeli's tenure, a new 22-room elementary school was constructed on Pleasant Street, but closed in 2015 due to an enrollment decline. As mentioned previously, the St. Anthony and St. Anne churches merged recently as the parish of St. Francis de Sales.
The Advent Christian Church on the north end of West Street was founded in 1858. This parish worshiped in a variety of business halls for the next 20 years. When the Methodist Episcopal Church moved in 1880 to its new sanctuary on Summer Street, a minority of their members left this church. Considering the North Village as their community church, they joined the Advent Church. The Advent Church first leased the former Methodist Church, and when sufficient funds were available, bought this church. Unfortunately, it burned to the ground in 1890. The present church, the Calvary Advent Christian Church, dedicated in 1891, was constructed on the same site. Under the leadership of Pastor George E. Tyler, who served from 1898 to 1915, this congregation was well known for their extensive missionary work. During the pastorate of Garth Story, the church's services were broadcast on radio. The Advent Church in 1993 purchased the Seth Barnes House, built in 1783 on a corner of West Street and Terryville Avenue. This now serves as the parsonage for the church and is the oldest house on West Street. Today, the Advent Church is known for its meaningful and clever signs one can read traveling along Route 6. The Swedish and German Immigration to Bristol Forestville The Swedish and German immigrants, although settling much earlier within our country, did not arrive to our community until the final three decades of the 19th century. Upon their arrival, they also joined a very religious community that already included the Congregational, Baptist, Episcopal, Methodist, Catholic, and Adventist churches. Being the first non-English speaking newcomers to settle within the Bristol area, they faced the immigrant mood with a distrust and disdain for them prevalent within the community. The result was that they clustered together with all their activity, whether worship, education, business, or social, conducted in their native language. This would decline somewhat during the fighting of World War I, when trust in the immigrants was essential for life, but in reality lasted all the way through World War II. The Swedish who arrived prior to the German immigrants, circa 1871, settled in the Forestville area. They became associated with the Scandinavian Evangelical Lutheran Augustana Synod, one of the two national Lutheran governing bodies. This arrangement with the more liberal of the two Lutheran affiliates proved very harmonious for all the Swedish churches. The German Lutherans, arriving circa 1890, generally affiliated with the Second National Church body, the more conservative Missouri Synod. They were expected to follow the strict conformity of the pure doctrine based on the Bible and confession of sin. Unlike the Swedish, the German Lutheran Church within the community encountered significant turmoil throughout the years due to this affiliation. By 1874, the Swedish immigrants began utilizing itinerant ministers to conduct religious worship. With sufficient membership in 1880, 
they organized the Bethesda Lutheran Church and conducted services first on the second floor of Deming Store or at the First Forestville Firehouse, the Old Stafford School, or in member homes. In 1886, they constructed a small church on Academy Street. This was only the second Swedish Lutheran church in Connecticut, the other being located in Portland. 20 years later, with a growing membership, they built a larger church next door. This was dedicated in 1907. This facility had to be enlarged twice throughout its history. The number of Swedish near the center of Bristol, probably due to industrial employment, was growing. Known as the Swedish Parade, they journeyed three miles to the Bethesda Church for weekly services. In 1887, with sufficient numbers, they met at the Trinity Church on High Street and organized the Lebanon Evangelical Lutheran Church. Four years later, they voted to proceed with the building of a church on Stern Street. While the church was being constructed, they held services at the former YMCA and the Trinity Church. The first worship service in their own facility was held on New Year's Day, 1892. A parsonage was built on adjoining land in 1900. The Lebanon and Bethesda churches were closely associated from the beginning, sharing a pastor from 1887 to 1947. This pastor resided in a Lebanon parsonage. In 1947, both congregations became independent churches being able to call their own pastor. Reverend Richard B. Pearson was selected at Bethesda, while Reverend Marcus Lornell was installed at Lebanon. In 1951, the Lebanon church was completely redesigned and enlarged. There was a constant growth within both churches into the late 1950s and early 60s. Bethesda in 1958 purchased 12 acres of land from the Methodist Campground Association on the west side of Camp Street with the intention of building a future church on this site. Pastor Lornell at Lebanon, likewise, despite recent changes, felt that his church had inadequate facilities and parking accommodations. During January of 1963, consolidation of the two churches as the Gloria Day Lutheran Church to the glory of God was approved by both church consuls. With this consolidation, architectural plans were soon developed Groundbreaking ceremonies took place on April 1st. While the church was being constructed, services were held at the Westwood School off of Stafford Avenue. Pastor K. Albar Person from Bethesda was selected as his first pastor and served until 1977. The first services were held on Christmas Day, 1963, in the Fellowship Hall. The church was formally dedicated on March 8, 1964. Although both Bethesda and Lebanon Lutheran churches started a strictly Swedish congregation, Gloria Day was represented by 20 nationalities in 1980. The National Salvation Army was founded in 1865. Bristol's chapter was formed in 1912 and was located in at least 10 sites prior to its settling on Prospect Street 
from 1941 to 1963. The Salvation Army, a Christian nonprofit organization, is part of the Universal Christian Church. In 1963, it recycled to the former Lebanon Lutheran Church on Stern Street. This church serves the abused, abandoned, underprivileged, and unfortunate residents of our community as well as providing disaster assistance. In 1982, a soup kitchen was opened. The Salvation Army, amongst other activities, provides meals, toys for needy children, and a variety of other social service needs. Captains Emmanuel and Sharina Echeverria now provide the leadership at the Bristol Citadel. Over the years, both facilities used by the Bethesda Lutheran Church have been recycled numerous times. The first church built in 1886, very soon after its closure in 1907, became the Orient Music Company, a manufacturer of paper music rolls and players. The Trinity Dye Company and Superior Cleaners were situated here for over 25 years. The contact advertising concern was here in the 1960s and 70s. Today's present tenant is the Academy Auto Sales. The second church dedicated in 1907 since its merger with Lebanon Lutheran to form Gloria Day, has served as home to the Knights of Columbus Palos Consul No. 35, the New Covenant Church, the Hillside Community Church, and presently as the Bristol Bible Chapel. The beginning of the Catholic religion in Bristol can be traced back to 1847, when the Irish worked at the copper mines on Stafford Avenue near the Burlington town line. Reverend Luke Daly from St. Mary's Church in New Britain said mass at mine buildings or homes. When work at the mines dwindled and the mines closed in 1857, the Irish transition to either laying railroad tracks or were employed at local factories. Land was purchased for a centrally located church on the east side of the Federal Hill Green. The first Catholic church, St. Joseph Church, initiated services in 1855 in a small wooden church located here, which was later remodeled. This church would provide services not only to the Irish, but also for all other incoming Catholic immigrants. In 1902, a rectory, convent, and school were constructed next to the old church. None of these exist today and have been replaced by parking lots. The old school which faced Queen Street, was replaced in 1960 by a new facility which faces Center Street. The first convent was taken down and replaced by what has become the St. Joseph's Parish Center. In 1925, with significant growth, a larger and new English-style Gothic church was dedicated and still is in use today. By 1891, membership had grown from 200 parishioners to over 3,000. This included a significant number of immigrants from a variety of nations. 400 Forestville Catholics who had previously traveled to St. Joseph's for services requested and were granted in 1881 
to be able to worship in their village surroundings. Reverend Michael Rodden would travel for 10 years to two different Forestville firehouses to conduct these services. Groundbreaking services in 1891 were held in Forestville for the building of the St. Matthew's Church, which would become a mission church of Our Lady of Mercy from Plainville. This church, similar to St. Joseph, would serve a large Irish population as well as a variety of other immigrants. A cornerstone was laid in 1891, but construction was delayed for five years due to an economic downturn and shortage of building material. Worship was held in the basement of the unfinished church. Official dedication ceremonies took place in 1897. The land for the church was donated by James Hart Welch, son of Elijah N. Welch, Bristol entrepreneur and first millionaire. The home stood where the second St. Matthew convent was located. The first convent was located in the Ebb House on Academy Street. This is now a private residence. Land from the Welch estate was also utilized for construction of the St. Matthew School in 1961. St. Matthew's Church remained a mission of Our Lady of Mercy until 1918, when it became an independent church. The St. Matthew Parish witnessed a constant growth which during the 1950s included 3,000 families. Land was purchased on Louisiana Avenue for the construction of a new church, but was sold when the St. Gregory the Great Church was created in 1957 to alleviate the overcrowding. This church would be dedicated in 1960. A feasibility study in the 1980s said that repair and enlarging the old St. Matthew's Church would be more expensive than constructing a new edifice. Plans moved forward with a cornerstone laid in 1987. When the church was completed, the old church was taken down and replaced with parking for the new church. The location of the new church serves as a perfect example of the recycling of former assets. Three schools previously stood on this property. The Academy, Forestville's first school, remained active until a school known first as the Forestville School, next as the District 13 School, and later as the Sarah E. Reynolds School was completed. The Academy building was moved to Plainville and served as a Grange Hall for several years. An annex building built where the Academy stood became necessary due to increased enrollments. During many summers, a Bristol Park Department playground used this building and its surrounding land. Where the church presently is situated was the site of the school's playgrounds, as well as the first forest for Little League field in the 1950s. Prior to this, the home of George W. Brown, world-famous maker of clock mechanism tin toys, was located on the corner of Brown Street and Church Avenue. St. Matthew's purchased and took this home down for additional parking. Brown Street, now a defunct city street, ran from Church Avenue to Academy Street, directly in front of the new St. Matthew's Church. The St. John Episcopal Church, which the St. Matthew's Church purchased in 1961, once stood in the parking lot directly behind the St. Matthew Rectory.
the French Canadian, Polish, and Italian immigrants brought their former traditions, customs, and means of worship to the Bristol community. Although they appreciated the church services provided by both St. Joseph and St. Matthew, they desired to have a pastor of their own ethnicity who could conduct the liturgy in their native language. The French Canadians in 1907 were the first to establish an ethnic church when Reverend Joseph Perrault was assigned as pastor. It was named the St. Anne's Church after the patroness of the French Canadians. Services were held during 1907 and 1908 at either Crenolin Hall, our community's first town hall, or on the second floor of the J.H. Sessions Company on North Main Street. The first mass in their own basement church facility at the corner of Gaylord and West Street was celebrated on Christmas Day, 1908. Ten years later, in 1918, a combined school and convent were opened. Thirteen students became its first graduating class in 1920. In 1954, with an increased enrollment, four classrooms were added. In 1959, to allow more classroom space, the sisters vacated this convent and moved to a new convent facility, which was dedicated in 1960. This is now the home of the St. Vincent de Paul Mission of Bristol. Although the school had 500 students in 1971, it closed in 1989 due to declining enrollment. The school was taken down and the Boys and Girls Club of Bristol now occupies this location. In 1953, a new church with an ultra-modern cruciform style was dedicated. Built in the form of a cross, this new facility could accommodate 1,200 parishioners. While being constructed, worship was held at the Cameo Theater. With a reduced attendance at religious services, as well as the number of priests declining, the St. Anne and St. Anthony churches have recently been merged as the parish of St. Francis de Sales. The Polish citizens of our community formed the St. Stanislaus Costa Society as early as 1902 with the intention of socializing together and keeping the heritage alive. In 1912, they initiated plans to create a second ethnically focused church following the lead of the St. Anne's Parish. The church was approved and organized with land being purchased on West Street for its construction. Reverend George Bartluski, ordained only four years earlier, was appointed its first pastor. He would serve 49 years from 1919 to 1968 until his retirement. The first Mass in 1919, similar to St. Anne's, was conducted at the Old Town Hall on Main Street. A cornerstone was laid in 1920 with the first Mass conducted in their basement church on Christmas Day, 1920. This facility would serve for the next 34 years. The parish erected a parish school in 1930. The teaching sisters lived in school classrooms until a home behind the church was remodeled as a convent in 1948. A new convent was constructed in 1967 which presently serves as the Bartluski Parish Center. 
the school was closed due to decreasing enrollment and financial concerns. With the influx of people to our community, either seeking industrial employment or returning from the Second World War, it became necessary to construct a larger church. In 1954, the old basement church was demolished. The new church was built on the same site. Church services were held in the school hall during the construction phase. The new Gothic style church was dedicated in 1956. A new rectory was built in 1963, replacing the former home of Andrew Ingram, which had served as the rectory since 1919. The last major group of Catholic immigrants, the Italians, arrived in Bristol circa 1896. The majority settled either in the west end of Bristol or in Little Italy, a development off of Pine Street in East Bristol. During the early years of the 20th century, they began to formulate plans for an Italian parish, which was authorized in 1920. Land was purchased on School Street from Nels Nystrom, who owned an automobile and repair business in that location. Luigi Beccaris from Harford was appointed pastor. The church would be named St. Anthony's of Padua. The first mass was celebrated in December of 1920 in the Nystrom garage. A small church constructed near Pleasant Street would serve the parish from 1920 to 1930. During its first three years, the parish grew from 380 families to over 600. This omened the need for a much larger facility. During these years, land for a rectory was purchased on the corner of Orchard Street. A new Gothic style church with room for 900 worshipers was constructed in front of the first church. Bristol contractor Cosmo Baca was selected to build this church. It became necessary to take down half of the former church. The new edifice was dedicated in the fall of 1930. Reverend Septimio Crudele was appointed pastor in 1938 and served 34 years until his retirement in 1972. He immediately initiated major changes. The St. Anthony Elementary School, which would include ninth grade, opened in September of 1940 with three classrooms constructed within the shell of the former church. This was increased by three rooms in 1944. The first graduation ceremonies were held in 1950. The religious order of the Filipini teachers were hired to staff the school. The former Vita Root factory and property were purchased in 1950 and transformed to become the parish-based St. Anthony's High School. 20 sophomores became the first class in September of 1950. With the diocesan development of a regional Catholic high school system, St. Anthony High School closed in 1967 after 18 years, having graduated 930 students. Brackett Park now occupies this location. Reverend Crudeli also ordered the construction of a modern elementary school on Pleasant Street. This school contained 22 classrooms. Due to decreased enrollment, it closed in 2015. In 1990, the old church was demolished with the construction of a large addition on the south end of the church. As previously mentioned, St. Anthony's Church 
has merged with St. Anne's Church to form the St. Francis de Sales Parish. Session number four of Bristol Forestville Recycle, Then and Now, will include the immigration of the Swedish and Germans to the United States in the late 1800s and the variety of religions they held and the churches they developed. The time frame will be from circa 1880 to the present day and will include a variety of other types of faiths and buildings constructed. Follow us on Instagram at nutmeg.tv.